Welcome to my new series where I take a new brand new account and I try to see how fast I can get it to 1500 elo and this is day one so let's start okay it seems my opponent doesn't have any elo so we're just gonna play like we usually do and try to play the Karo Khan okay my opponent's throwing all their pawns into the middle of the board this I've never seen before wow a third pawn Okay, I think with the Karo Khan, we just develop her bishop, play a simple opening. My opponent's having a very long think here. Oh, and he brings out his queen. So, if he takes, I take. He takes with queen, my queen can take back, so that's not an issue. So, probably continue like normal. I don't see any threats. Let's develop our knight. Let's see what we can do. Okay, he closes up the center, which is completely fine by me, because I need to develop. I need to develop my bishop, my knight, and I need to get castled. So I don't care if he wants to keep the position closed, because it's going to be easier for me. Okay, he develops his knight. Okay. Let me develop my bishop. Just normally, very simple, straightforward easy development get my king out of the center get all my pieces developed make it easy for me and then we can start to attack and then we can start to create some pressure on the board but for now we're good Ooh, he pushes another pawn but the problem with pushing this pawn is it allows me to get my knight here and it's very hard to contest it and if you take with the knight or replace it with the bishop and you don't have many pieces to contest. You can't push it away with a pawn. So, I want to go castle. I don't need to put it here now. I just need to get all my pieces out. Only when we get all of our pieces developed are we going to try to go and break in the center. But for now, just trying to stick to very basic rules. Keep it very simple. Okay, continue to push pawns. Now, let's assess. Is this a threat? If he pushes the pawn... Does our bishop get trapped? He goes here, he pushes it, I take with the pawn, he takes back, I take with the bishop. We're good there. No threats. So we have every single one of our pieces developed. Now it's time to get our queen out and try to break into the center. So I'm going to push this pawn and try to open up the board a little bit. I can either take with my knight or my queen. But since I've already developed my knight to this square, I'm thinking we put our queen here. And attack this weak pawn. If he ever takes. Okay, he doesn't take. I'm thinking we can do another opening move, is pushing this pawn, so that if he takes, we can take with a rook or with the pawn, just try to open up the board a little bit more. I need the board to open up so we can have some opportunities. Ooh, okay, so we've already assessed that this is not a threat. I knew that I can go here, and if he pushes, I can take with the pawn. He takes back, and I'm winning a pawn there, so we're good. No threats. Okay, but he does attack my knight. So we were talking about how I want my knight here regardless. So I think this is a good place to put my knight. Take over some squares. Hit the knight. If he tries to trade it, I can put my bishop here. We should be good. Okay, he develops his bishop here. Attacking this so that if he pushes, I take. Still not a threat. So... Now we have to look. We can attack the rook, but he can move up. And then I'm not seeing how we can further attack him that way. So I think we can start opening up on this side of the board. Take that pawn. And see what he does. He can take with the queen. It's a possibility. Let's see if he does it. If he takes with the queen, then he is okay. He doesn't take with the queen. He decides to do that okay so if he pushes the pawn here if i i have to move here he can take kind of ruin the pawn structure maybe i don't want that so we can go here and try to break into the center and also give my bishop a place to breathe i like that now the problem with going here is that he can take this pawn maybe that's not good i think we're gonna have to deal with you know if he pushes here, I put my bishop here, and he can take. I'm fine with that. 
So let's just continue. Well, this pawn hasn't been taken yet. Let's just open up the board. I'm trying to get it all open. Now we're defending this pawn. So if he takes, I can take with the bishop or I can even take with the knight. Now if I take with the knight, he can take with the queen. But if he takes with the queen here, then we have a check with the queen and the king. And that's called a fork. So, And it's also a discovery attack. If he takes, check. I can also pick it up with my bishop. But regardless, he has to move his queen. Okay, so he falls for my trap. He puts himself on a forkable square. And also a discovered area. So now my bishop and my knight are looking at the queen. And we will be picking up a free piece. A free queen. Let's see if he resigns. Okay, so I can take with the bishop, but then he takes my knight. So let's just preserve the knight. Keep it intact. There's no reason to lose a piece for no reason. Now we're threatening to take with a rook here. If he takes, takes, that's a trade. And I'm good with trades because I am up a full queen. And I've just also noticed that we have a fork here with the rook and the king. Which actually might be pretty good. I'll consider that. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if he spots it. Okay, he goes here and he attacks, but this is already defended. So I think we go for our fork. Rook and king. And we will be picking up the rook here in the corner. Our knight's not under danger. We have a bishop looking at it. And also, this pawn is undefended. So let's pick up the rook like we wanted to. And if it's possible, we can even save it. Okay. He decides that this trade of the rook for the knight is beneficial for him. And now we're going to just adhere by basic principles. We're going to completely trade down the board. We're up so much material. There's really no reason to keep the material, material on the board to try and get a checkmate. Just trade off everything when we can. We're pinning the knight here. He cannot move it, so we can guarantee that we can get a trade. Which is good for us. We can also put him in a mating net. So, his king can't go here. If I put my bishop here, he can't go here. But you know what? Let's just trade. We have the opportunity. There's no reason not to. So if we give a check, he moves up, and then our knight gets trapped. So, I don't see the benefits. I could escape with my knights, but no point. Let's get our other pieces onto the board. Bring our rook so we can give checks. I'm trying to bring our queen. Okay, he defends this. I think a great thing to teach is completely simplify the board. Just take, get rid of every single piece he has. Now we bring our rooks and our king and our rooks and queen and we tried to attack him. Okay, we have a check here. And we can escape with our knight. But we don't need to worry about that yet. So we can just bring a rook in. And try to check and mate him. Given that we're up so much material. It doesn't even really matter what we do. Okay, there goes bishop here. Attacking my knight. Uh, and I'm up so much material. I don't need to worry about it. Let's give a check. He can't go here. He can go here if he wants, but I'm assuming that this is a mate. So going down here is not an option. He has to go here. And let's see. Let's calculate this. So if I go check, he's forced here. Or no. Sorry. If I give a check, that is checkmate. Because the king can't go here. He can't go along this. And that will end the game. Good game. Let's play another game. Chess is fun when it's really easy. All right, let's play the Karo Khan again. Whoa, bringing his queen out early. Okay, so if I go here, he cannot go bishop here because I can take. So let's push your pawn. And then let's see what he does. He takes. We take back with the pawn. And again, he cannot develop his bishop. He cannot take with the queen because our queen is defending. And I'm planning to play knight here next. That would be a good move. Okay, he's 
putting a lot of pressure on this pawn, but I can play a move that does a lot of things. I can attack the queen, defend the pawn once more, defend this pawn once more. That would be pretty good. Okay, it goes here. He's hitting the knight, hitting the pawn, hitting this knight. I'm not seeing any threats. Go here, he can pin me, but that's fine. Let's go here. Let's attack the queen once more. Let's keep making the queen move while we can uh, get developed. That's good for us. Okay. He keeps moving around. Now, he's putting pressure on this pawn, so if I ever do move this bishop, it can get uncomfortable. So, I'm going to leave it there for now. I need to get this bishop developed, though. If I go here, he can push with the pawn. I think we play very closed. I think we play... Hmm. I'm not sure. This pawn might be an issue. But I can also fianchetto my bishop instead of bringing it out this way. That might be a good system. I like that. Let's get castled as early. Whoa! He played that instantly. If I had attacked his queen, it would have been an issue for him. But luckily I didn't. So we're just going to bring our bishop out. Continue our escapades. Everything's defended. I'm planning to castle. And I don't see any way he can get through my solid setup here. He develops his knight. Let's see. If I push, he goes here. I can take, he takes. Simple development. I'm okay with that. But also, we can get our king safe. Let's see. He's attacking this pawn once, but we're defending it twice. He's attacking it twice. I'm defending it twice. No threats. I'm good. We can push if we like, but we can keep the structure as well. So let's see what he does. Just trying to get castled. Get her pieces out. Get her queen out. Whoa! He goes ultra aggressive. Okay. So he's attacking my He's attacking my knights. He's putting some pressure on the pawns here. And this knight is only defended by the pawn. So can I exploit that? Well, do we have any checks? No. Do we have any discoveries? We do. We have one discovery here. We can hit the queen. Okay. But then he can take. I take. He takes. We take. That'd be good. But also he can take. Take. He takes the queen. Okay. I can also kick the queen away. So that if he moves to a square, I can go here. Hitting the queen, hitting the knight. I like that. Let's go here. Hit the queen so that he's forced to make a move like this to defend the knight. Okay. I'm assuming he doesn't really care about defending the knight. That was actually not on his bucket list. So, I think we will take the knight. But if he were to move, if he were to move, his queen here defend, knights here attacking the queen, attacking the knight, would be good for me. Okay, he develops his bishop. Furthermore. Okay. Let's see. So can we attack the queen? The queen's fine. So we're up a piece. I'm planning on trading. I think trading is a good solution here. Offer a trade of bishops, because the less pieces I can get on the board, the better. Because I will just be up an entire piece. Okay, let's see. So if I bring my knight over here to attack... Oh no, sorry. This knight to attack the... Which knight can I bring over? Right, I'm, I'm going crazy. There's no knight I can put here to attack this pawn. So I've gone insane. I can go here, offer another trade of the bishop, so that if he takes, I take with my knight. I don't see anything wrong with that. But also, we've already moved our bishop. There's no reason to do 
more movements with our bishop. If we push our pawn, he can take with the queen. Okay, let's just develop our rook to an open file. That should be well. That should be good. And let's see what he plays. Just trying to play very solid chess. Okay, he attacks me straight up. So I can either choose a counterattack or move my knight. And I'm thinking moving my knight's a good idea. Let's see. What places do I want to move my knight? If I go back here, it's a retreating move. Here, you can push me away with the pawn, but I can always go back. If he takes with the bishop, I take with the knight. Yeah, I think this is fine. It's also touching some pawns that could be weak. So yeah, I like this place for my knight. I like it. And then we can bring our other knights here, if we so choose. Yeah, this is... this is doing good for us. Okay, he does attack me, and I kind of stated how I can go back here, defend the pawn. If I go here, there's not a lot of places I can go here. I mean, I can go here, attack the queen, and maybe that's a better place for our knight. Let's go here. That way we can just bring our knights here, attack the queen, and maybe hop into some vulnerable squares. Okay, my opponent places his bishop in the line of fire of one, two pieces. Our bishop and our knight are touching it. So it's a free piece. And we take free pieces. So what do we want to take with, with the bishop or the knight? So if we take with the knight, it could be a good knight here. If we take with the bishop, it cuts off the king's squares here. And if he ever kicks it out, I can go back. Our knight's well placed here. And it also opens up our queen. I want to take with the bishop. I'll take with the bishop just so that we control some of the squares here. Okay, he does he does attack me. Okay. And like I said, if we go back here, problem is, if he goes pawn forward. He might actually trap me, which I completely didn't see, I'll be honest. I go here, this is a trap of my bishop. Now I could counterattack, that's correct, here, here, but he's going to be winning a bishop there, actually. Or sorry, so if I go bishop back, pushes the pawn, I go pawn forward, here, here, it's just not something I'm interested in. Let's bring our bishop back. Keep all the pieces on the board. Okay. He pushes a pawn. Now that seems like a good thing to take. I didn't mean to take that way. I meant to take with the bish the knight. Because I understood that this was under attack by both the bishop. But um, that's okay. He didn't see that that was a option to take. So he's attacking the bishop. So if he, he could sacrifice, but I can take with the knights. I don't have to take with the pawn and open up my king. So, probably, if I go here, move my knight away, try to trade some queens. And the, the downside is that if he pushes the pawn, my bishop doesn't have anywhere to go. So pushing this pawn might be a bad idea. Maybe pushing it to this square. I like that. I like this a little bit better. Pushing to this square so we can try to open up the board. His king is still stuck in the middle. So if we can just open up the board. Okay, he does attack me. Now I'm considering sacrificing. I'm considering, since we're up two pawns and I want to open up the board, and I don't like this attack with his pawns, I'm considering just giving up one of my knights and trying to go for a queen trade. I'm okay giving up. Two, I'm okay giving up one piece for two pawns. That's good to me. So I'm going to take with the knight. A hidden trick is that my the queens are now touching. So that if he simply just takes back, his queen will fall to my demands. Now, if he had taken the bishop, I would... If he had taken the queen, I would take back with the rook. And then just win two pawns. 
Now we should be very close to checkmate. The king doesn't have a lot of squares to go to. So, let's just take with our queen. Okay, he does win that pawn. I think he's bested me. Honestly, I didn't see that. This is just not looking the best for me. Now oh, there's noises outside. Now, to try and check my try to checkmate my opponent, I tr I think we should open up the board. I don't like that this pawn is cutting off my rook from oh, this file. So I'm going to give up one of my rooks, just so I can have this file open. Let's go check, and just open it up, open it up, and start forcing his king to start moving. Okay, let's see. So, in order to find mate, let's see where his king can't go. He can't go here, he can't go here with our queen over here is blocking off these squares, rook's blocking off this. So he can only go here and here, he's blocked. So if I take with the bishop, this would definitely lead to a mate. I don't even need to calculate it. Now let's see. He has a check. He does have a fork. Hmm. Maybe that's, that fork's not good. Maybe we don't like that fork. I don't want to give up another rook. I don't like that. Let's go ahead and let's just pin the bishop. Not the bishop, but the knight. And I don't see a way that he can actually defend this knight. He can't bring his king forward. Our rook is covering it. And my opponent has no squares to go to. His rooks can't defend the knight. He has no pawns on either side. So I believe we're going to be winning the knight for free. And I believe checkmate is going to ensue. Okay, that's a good move. It blocks my queen. So that he can actually... Start to escape if he likes. But let's just take the knight. It is free. And now let's start looking for checkmate because he's on the edge of the board. So let's start calculating. We go check with her queen. We hit him. He can't go here. Well, that's the first obvious move. We don't have to calculate check. He's obviously forced to go to one of these squares. And that's good for us regardless. In these situations, you don't have to calculate the exact mate. Okay, that's actually a good move. Surprisingly, because it stops my queen from looking at him. So this is a good move. Which I didn't calculate. I don't have time though. So I'm just going to go a little bit quicker now. I have nine seconds. Might lose this game. Who knows? Try to set up a checkmate here. I don't have pre-moves. This is bad. So he has to take the rook. This is not good. This is not looking good for me. I have no pre-moves. But luckily, just luckily, he has zero squares to go to, and that is checkmate. By the skin of my teeth, I forgot to turn on pre-moves, but with two seconds left on the clock, we were able to checkmate. I was procrastinating a little bit too much, but luckily, we caught him into mating nets. I had to panic a little bit and start giving up my queen, but our rook is defended, and he has zero squares to go to. Good game. And I think that will conclude my first day of trying to reach 1,500 ELO. Okay, we're 662. Great improvement from the 400 rating that we started off with. Check back in tomorrow. Go check out my merch. I've made some new merch. It's uh, a bunch of philosophers playing chess. It's pretty cool. I have some myself. Got it for myself. It looks cool. I wear it all the time. You should get some of yourself as well. So if you want to support the channel, go over and buy my merch. Link is in my bio. And yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.